I'd like to welcome all of you to Olam Tikva today. It's really wonderful to see everyone here for the culminating event of this year's confirmation program. This morning, I'd like to focus my remarks upon the themes of connectedness and community. I feel a special connection with this year's confirmation class. You see, for many of you, your Jewish education at Olam Tikva began in 2004. At about that same time, our family became members of this congregation. And what a rich and meaningful 11 years it has been for all of us. To our confirmands, this is a very special time in your lives. For the past year, you have drawn upon your years of Jewish study and had the opportunity to explore Judaism with each other, including examining the Jewish life cycle from a more mature perspective and embarking upon a study of comparative Judaism, where you've learned that, in the words of former Senator Edward Kennedy, what divides us pales in comparison to what unites us. Today, your confirmation program culminates with a community celebration, one where you will share personal experiences with all of us and receive recognition for your commitment to your Jewish education. Your past accomplishments are noteworthy and appreciated. New possibilities, new perspectives, and new opportunities lie ahead. The most renowned of the Jewish medieval scholars, Maimonides, wrote in his Code of Law, each person must see himself as though the entire world were held in balance, and any deed that person might do could tip the scales. Both the good deeds that you have done and the good deeds that you will continue to do enhance connectedness in our community, both inside and outside of our synagogue's walls. On behalf of the Olam Tikva Board of Directors, we wish you b'hatzlacha rabah as you begin a lifetime of Jewish learning and a commitment within the Jewish community. All of us are very proud of you and offer you our sincere good wishes. May each of you go from strength to strength. Torah Rabbah, Bilahit Rhodes. Thank you, Elan. Book your tub, everyone. All right, see, seventh graders are so good at responding to that. They have a lot of practice. Um, before, I, before I say anything else, I just want to um, acknowledge that in most of the programs that you're holding, Natalie's name was completely inadvertently left out of there. So Natalie's family has copies that have her name in it. So those are the ones that are, that are the real programs. And I, Natalie, I, I'm sorry. We love you. Uh, so I just want to, walk, uh, to offer words of welcome to our families, to the members of our community, from, especially from the board of directors who are joining us this morning, and especially a welcome to our confirmation class of 2015. Uh, this is a day that has been long in the making and we are really glad to celebrate the many years of Jewish education that have brought you to this day. We're also really glad that our seventh graders from the religious school are joining us today, along with some of the students in our eighth and ninth grade um, Tijon program, our high school program. Um, I want to take a moment to recognize our two confirmation students from last year. It wasn't quite enough to have a class, and you had to wait an entire year to join a confirmation photo. Um, but let's switch Mazal Tov also to Spencer Volker and to Michelle Masaryk. Mazal Tov. <laughs> we had a chance last year to hear about your accomplishments. I'm ask you to close your eyes for just a moment. Close your eyes. Picture your wedding, if you have one. Picture your bar mitzvah or your bat mitzvah. Picture the brit milah of a son, or the baby naming of your daughter, your child's bar or bat mitzvah, or even the funeral and the shiva for a loved one. Perhaps picture a transformative moment you had in the mikvah. At each stage of our lives, at each of these milestone moments, our tradition offers wisdom and guidance. And we come to expect and to love and to appreciate the comfort and the meaning that these experiences give to us. As Ilan mentioned, throughout this year of study, 
our confirmation students have the chance to revisit these rituals and ceremonies that mark life cycle moments. Rather than doing this as a, in a cursory way, they were able, able to delve into the symbolism of our ceremonies and to discuss the connections they make in the contemporary world. They even had a chance to figure out some of the challenges that our ancient ceremonies present to us and how we might overcome them. And they did just that, with wisdom and insight and the questions that young adults can provide, young adults with strong, strong Jewish identity. And you may have heard that the capstone experience for this year of study was to transform many of the elements they found in different Jewish life cycle ceremonies into a one-of-a-kind, unique confirmation ceremony, which you have done. Uh, you will recognize throughout this ceremony elements that are familiar, and you'll see some things that have been tweaked and made new. Our students will have the chance to explain each element and then, and then perform. It. They will talk about the ties to the traditional ceremonies, and they'll talk about the meaning for today's moment of completion. They have thought long and hard about who would be in the room with us today, and so some of you will be invited to participate, and so listen for those parts. So without further ado, I'd like to call up Aiden and Natalie, who will introduce the ceremony. Welcome to Confirmation 5775 Graduation Ceremony. We are delighted that you are able to join us on this special day. Today we are reaching a luminal moment, or transitioning moment, in our Jewish education that can be demonstrated meaningfully through the six senses. Often used in baby naming, the senses each represent different aspects of the natural world. These aspects are then introduced to the newborn child in order to portray the various beauties of the world they have now entered. However, for our ceremony, each sense demonstrates the unforgettable memories of our past and the tremendous acts that we will take in the future as Jewish adults. The six senses of hearing, sight, smell, taste, the sixth sense, or looking into the future, and touch, will now be explained by our classmates, who will demonstrate their significance and connection to this moment. Without further ado, I'm happy to introduce Noah. He has worked on a blessing for the class which demonstrates the Jewish idea of inspiring and connecting with others. By taking a blessing and making it his own, Noah has shown the Jewish education that has influenced him. The Greek philosopher Zeno of Saitam remarked, we have two ears and one mouth so we should listen more than we say. Zeno reminds us that the mouth can communicate, but the sense of hearing is the glue of all verbal conversations. Active listening skills have been an invaluable resource throughout humanity's greatest moments and have presented too many obstacles when not applied. Think of how difficult developing architecture, writing systems, and entire religions would have been with the omission of our hearing abilities. It is no wonder why a prenatal baby is said to develop the sense of hearing first, of all other senses. The baby's developing ears are stimulated by the sound of his or her mother's voice in the womb, absorbing sound before being able to even produce it. Later in life, a very holy channel of communication is opened when every bar or bat mitzvah reads from the Torah. Not only is reading scripture a mitzvah itself, uh, but allowing others to listen and hear the words of prophets truly displays human integrity. Today, reciting and hearing the words of prayer deepens the meaning of completing our formal Jewish education. The prayer our class will recite is Kaddish de Rabbanan. Kaddish de Rabbanan means the teacher's Kaddish. In services and regular text readings, this blessing is recited at the completion of communal Torah study. And while only read by mourners during certain points of a Shabbat service, Kaddish de Rabbanan blesses the teachers or rabbis and students that regularly engage in religious study and recognize the milestones of these endeavors. It recounts and congratulates the students for their diligent religious efforts in Judaism. At this, um, at this class has done since the beginning of religious school. Our class will now recite a portion of Kaddish Arana.
Yit Gadal, the Yit Kadash, Shemei Rabbah, the Alma, the Vrach, the Rote, the Amlich Malchute, the Chayechon, the Amechon, the Chayev, the Chobi, Israel, the Agala, the Bisman, the Karib, the Imru, the Yehesh, the Rabbah, the Barach, the Olam, the Lome, the Amaya, the Isparach, the Ishtabach, the Itpaar, the Itromam, the Inase, the Itadar, the Italev, the Italal, the Shemei, the are also celebrating today, not only our confirmation, but the fact that we have embraced Jewish education as a value of our own. The prayer you will recite is the blessing parents give to children as Shabbat begins, and it's also the blessing the Kohanim offer to the congregation on holidays. It's found in the confirmation program. I now invite our class's parents to rise and recite the parents' prayer. Thank you, parents, religious school teachers, and rabbis for your constant support and patience as we have listened and absorbed the knowledge you have presented during these past years. Thank you. Next up will be Jessica and Deanna with Sight, portraying the beauty and lessons one can learn visually through the act of candlelighting. Our eyes give us the ability to observe the community and nature around us. How we perceive others, ourselves, and ourselves comes from these observations. Without this ability, we would be lost, navigating through life and unable to create such strong communities and connections. First, each candle shows our uniqueness as individuals who make up our class. We design and decorate these candles to represent ourselves. No two designs are the same. We stand here as a group of students who have grown and learned together, at the same time have come into our own. Second, the flame itself represents us as a class. But like our class, that flame has many parts that make it special. We see the flame as just a yellow light. But the flame consists of many different colors. Each, each color that shines in the flame of these candles represents each of us and how we have worked together over the years and become good friends. And lastly, the flame represents how our class radiated through the years. When the flame is extinguished, the smoke dispersed. 
disperses into the air as well disperse into the world. When we blow out these flames in a moment and the smoke drifts away, let's pause to reflect the values and skills we have gained and imagine where that foundation will lead us in years to come. One, two, three. Taste and smell are Emily and Brady. Taste and smell are not only connected physically but spiritually as well. As a well known fact, much of taste comes from scent. Therefore, every bite we take uses both senses. In a similar way, our Jewish memories of Shabbat or Hanukkah often combine the two senses the smell of challah and the warm flavor of bread, and the greedy smell of latkes as the crunch in our mouth. Even if only one of these senses is missing from the memory, it would not be as satisfying. Lots of rituals revolve around food and taste. A meaning of taste that I found is to try the flavor or quality of something. At a baby naming ceremony, someone will give the baby some wine. Just a little though, because we don't want drunk babies everywhere. That would be good. When a kid first starts studying Torah, they will give him some honey so that he'll associate learning with sweetness. You should do that in normal schools. They don't, but they should. At our B'nai Mitzvah, you guys saw Chuck Candy at us. I have four pieces of the candy that you'll throw at us with me right now. Once for, once for me, once for my counter, because I really want to throw a piece at him. <laughs> I'll do it when you're not lucky. <laughs> once for Noah, because he didn't have a bar mitzvah at Olam Tikva. And once for Brady, because he's stuck up here with me. We had honey at the beginning of learning, and we will have candy at the end, because it's just a sweet most of the time. The learning through the rest of our... The learning through the rest of our lives, we hope, will also be sweet. Mom and Dad, that means a lot of candy, so just keep it coming. Spells are all, all around us during school, religious, and normal. At our house, at the, the synagogue, we use smell at a hapkala time to feel a separation from Shabbat to work. The smell we are using today is the smell of challah, because we have been smelling this since we were very little. The smell of challah is the transition from being a student to an adult learner. After today, the smell of challah will also bring a strong reminder to our years of education. Some of you may be wondering what the sixth sense really means. Simply put, it means looking ahead to the future. However, it is not anticipating what will happen to you a year from now. Rather, it is a preparation for what events are to come. Daniel and Ben will share with you the charge to the rising eighth graders, as well as the traveler's prayer, which is our charge to ourselves as rising Jewish adults. Eighth graders, this is for you. Uh, so you're 13, you just had your bar mitzvah, and you think, finally, I'm out. It's been seven or eight years of Jewish education. Why would you continue? Well, some of you might not, but if this speech goes as planned, most of you will go on to get confirmed, just like we are today. If you were thinking what I just said, first of all, that's pretty cool, because I just like read your mind. <laughs> and second, you should definitely listen up, because I'm about to tell you some reasons you should continue your Jewish education. And a lot of you will say, Daniel, what does it matter what I think? My parents are just going to tell me what to do anyways, right? Wrong. In reality, you are just a Jewish adult now. You should be able to make your own decisions about your Jewish education. If you don't want to continue, that's fine, but ask yourself why before you make your final decision. If you do want to continue, that's even better. So in your decisions of whether or not to continue, here are some things you should take into consideration. First, you can strengthen your knowledge of your culture, heritage, and religion. Looking back, I realized that I've learned so much about Jewish history in just three years, and just the three years that I spent in OT's high school program, Tihon. 
including zero confirmation. Second, it's not that hard to get confirmed. It's nothing like school where you have like two tests every month. There's no studying, and the little classwork they give you in class is really easy, and you can work on it with a friend. Also, no homework. I know we all hate doing homework. In fact, the, home, the only homework I can think of in my entire confirmation career is writing a speech. <laughs> All you really have to do is come to class, learn about your culture, eat some snacks, sit back, relax with friends, and before you know it, three years have passed and you're standing up in front of a bunch of seventh graders, just like I am right now. Now most importantly, you can choose what to learn about. Throughout the year, the hardworking teachers ask you what you want to learn about, and they go home and come up with a lesson to, and teach you whatever subject you told them. You said you want to talk about modern events, sure. You want to talk about cooking more? Go for it. You said you want to play more games? Great. Confirmation is really all about you. Your parents pretty much brought you through OTRS, but you take yourself through confirmation. It's your journey. And at the end, you get your confirmation class picture on the wall over there to show your accomplishment. And that's pretty cool. Well, here you all are. You may choose to enter Jewish education now, or you may continue to the next step towards confirmation like we have. Regardless, it's important for everyone to have a good wish of guidance and peace for your journey. Now, you may be saying, journey? What journey? I'm finished now if I want, if I choose to. And even so, if I go through confirmation, it'll end then too. What's the difference? The journey should, the journey should be ending for me. To that, I say, not exactly. While, yes, you may be finished with your formal Jewish education in one way or another, your experience is only just beginning. To me, one of the most beautiful things in this world is knowledge because one, even though it is intangible, it lasts a lifetime, and two, because it's likened to an unquenchable thirst. It's natural to have the desire to learn. It's normal. It's human. There's an omnipresent urge to learn more among people. Regardless of your decision to continue your education, you'll always find and learn new things, thus the beginning of your journey. This is where the, the, the Tefillah Hadera, or Traveler's Prayer, comes into play. At face value, the traveler's prayer, prayer is about, well, travel. But it's more than that. It's about finding beginnings and endings. It's about appreciating the here and now and aiming for the same triumph in the future. May it be your will, Adonai, our God and God of our ancestors, to guide us in peace, prepare us, support us, and lead us to our chosen destination in peace, joy, well-being, and lead us home again in peace. I hope that, regardless of your decision, you find appreciation in the present and continue your ongoing quest for now. Touch can be a very important aspect of Judaism, though most of us don't see it that way. You touch the mezuzah as you walk through a doorway, you feel the texture of the lulav as you shake it during Sukkot, you wrap yourself in tefillin as you pray, and you feel the crunch under your foot when you smash the glass at the conclusion of a wedding. So to represent touch in our ceremony today, each of us will stomp on a red cello cup rather than a nice piece of glass. During the wedding ceremony, the smashing of the glass is done to remind us of the sadness of the destruction of the temple in the midst of celebration. Today we do this to remind us of the sadder side of what we are celebrating today. We are concluding what has been for some of us years spent together, and for others what has hopefully been a single meaningful year. We will no longer have such a good opportunity to have interesting discussions on Jewish history and ritual during our teenage years nor will we have such a good excuse for procrastinating on our homework. In addition, the smashing of a glass is meant to show the permanence of marriage. 
After the glass is smashed, it can never return to the way it was before, just as marriage should be. For us, our cups will never be straightened out after they have been crushed. Our smushed cups show us how confirmation class has affected all of us in ways that cannot be reversed. We have learned new things, we have studied new ideas, and we have expanded on our knowledge of Jesus. Lastly, while red solo cups are typically a quintessential symbol of teenage fun and parties, today, as the smashing of a glass in a wedding, they represent the transition into the next stage of our Jewish lives. At the end of the wedding ceremony, it's customary to say a mazel after the glasses smash. We ask you to do the same. So now we're going to give you a gift. And uh, each of you will also receive a confirmation certificate. We're actually going to start in a minute with um, last year's class um, because you didn't get gifts last year. So you had to wait a whole year. But you get your gifts first now. So see, it works out. Um, the gifts are very specifically chosen. In a lot of congregations, you get a book. I know you all are big readers. But we give you something a little bit different. My favorite ritual all year long for our 10th graders is watching the cars pull up. Both doors open, one of you gets out of the front seat, the, pass the driver's seat, and your parent gets out of the passenger seat. You switch, you come in, they drive away, and two hours later we do the whole thing again. The only one I've seen so far do it on our own is Aiden. Um, they're all making this transition together. They're becoming drivers. And so just like you created a ritual, a few years ago we created a ritual, so your gift is based around that transition in your life. So I want to start by asking Spencer Volker and uh, Michelle Masaryk to come up to get their gifts. Is Michelle here? Okay, we owe her a gift. Don't let her leave without it. Rachel Benedis.
Grady Volker. I'm, I'm slowing down. Benjamin Felsen. Deanna Sterling. Aiden Sherry. Hannah Rothberg and Hannah, come on, Hannah Rothberg. And Daniel Lustig, my guess is that your certificate is sitting on my desk because I didn't grab the whole pot. So come on up. You can come up anyway. You get the present. That's the better part. <laughs> I'm very pleased to present our confirmation class of 2014 and 2015. again. Um, as you heard, uh, Stuart Bender is not able to be here with us today. He had a, a family a situation that took him away, but the students had asked him to speak on behalf of all of the teachers that they've had throughout the years. Um, and so he wanted to honor that request, so he asked me to read something that he wrote for them. Confirmation class, this is from Mr. Bender. First of all, I am deeply honored that you, my students, asked me to deliver remarks on your important day. I regret I cannot be with you in person due to medical issues within our family. So instead, you have my words and all of my very best wishes as you attain this stage in your Jewish life. First of all, I am sure you look marvelous. And I bet your parents told you what to wear today. So be sure to thank your mom and dad for this and for everything they have done for you. And today we celebrate you. You chose to continue your Jewish education, exploring your roots and our traditions, and I'm glad you did so in a fun way. I hope you will always remember our round robin game of Jewish history. You can explain it to your parents later. Over the past year, we examined the history of Jews in America and saw how historic events and current events often overlapped. We discussed our immigrant heritage, and some of you proudly brought in photos of grandparents, while others brought in handmade wooden chess pieces from Russia. We connected and shared stories of where our families came from, and we learned that although we all came to America from distant lands across Europe, and for some of us from places like Morocco, we all shared a common gift and blessing, our shared Jewish heritage. I want you to know that I am proud of you all. You are a wonderful class, and teaching you was one of the high points of my week, probably because you all shared your opinions and feelings so freely and honestly. And I ask, as you are confirmed today, that you continue to do just that. Stand up for what you believe in. Do not hesitate to share your amazing intelligence and your unique insights with the world. And use your sense of fairness and your pursuit of justice to ignite a candle of light. Be the brightest, shiniest link in the chain that is our golden tradition. So as I come to end my remarks, I would want to wish you good health, great wisdom, and all the joy and happiness that life has to offer. It has been a true honor and a privilege to have been your teacher. And as a final thought, I ask that each of you to be sure to thank your parents and give them an extra big hug for being your very first and your best teachers. I love confirmation class. I love it. It is, is absolutely one of my, my favorite parts of all of the favorite parts that I have in, in serving I love it because what you, in these front two rows, what you do is you bring to it so much of what Daniel and Benjamin shared, is that you bring a silliness, you bring a playfulness, a desire to eat, you bring a desire to, to learn, and you have
have this incredible switch that happens when you go from blah, 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 to laser-like focus on meaning, not just on knowledge, not just on data, but on meaning. And you are able to focus in on it in a way in which I, I think, and, and Rabbi Paschai, along with me, we think that sometimes we're there to teach you, and then we sometimes realize we're the learners, we're the students in those experiences. And you have done that, and it's, it is such a delight, and that's why that, that present fits all into this, because it's this extraordinary transition time. And you're going to do both of those going forward. You're going to mix together that playfulness that is, that is out there. Don't worry, parents, these cups will always remain. <laughs> but you also brought a few thousand years of tradition to that playfulness. And you brought this sixth sense of what happens next. You brought that to all of this as well. We think sometimes when we walk into rooms like this all over the world that we're supposed to be so desperately serious all the time. But you remind us that we're not. Life is lived much more fully, successfully, vitally when we bring laughter to it and we bring tangents to it and when we bring ultimately meaning to it. And you've done that in the most wonderful of ways. So my responsibility then is to, to bring this, this particular experience to a close. And so what I want you to do, just as Rabbi Paskind asked everybody in the beginning, to close their eyes and to, to think of, a, of a, a liminal moment in their lives. I want to ask just you, the confirmation class of 5775, to just close your eyes for a moment and think about the teachers who stood in front of you and shared part of their heart and their soul, not just their minds, but shared part of their Jewish hearts with you. And hold fast onto that as we're at this moment. So the bracha that I want to end with today is one that it's taken me 17 years of confirmation classes to get to. And that was, I had one of those V8 moments, you don't know what that means. I had one of those, those epiphanies. I had one of those realizations <laughs> that we recited a bracha when you began. And we said, we're going to see how this plays out. But I think it's one of those brachot that not only is important to us throughout our entire lives, but is one that is particularly meaningful this, for this moment. For it's a reminder of what you've accomplished over these past years in your Jewish education and for what all of that was about. And the bracha is the one that is in our siddur but not recited communally. But baruch ata adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam asher kitshanu b'mitzvotam b'tzivanu ma'asok b'divrei Torah. Praise to you, God, master of our universe, who gives us holiness places holiness inside each one of us by giving us, by demanding of us, by encouraging us to wrap our lives around the words of the Torah. Not just do this or don't do that, but about finding joy in everything that is out there, to be connected to our communities, and to always, as you've promised us, that you'll do as you go forward with your sixth sense is to do just a little bit better than we did last year because of the great blessings that our parents and our teachers have given us. So may you all continue to be wrapped up in Torah, whatever that means going forward, and to know that here, this room, this building, this community, is going to be there as a support for you. Just as it's been a foundation, it'll be a support for you in going forward. To all of you, we say, Azalto. Seven tall, mazel tall, mazel tall, the seven tall, seven tall, mazel tall, mazel tall, the seven tall, seven tall, mazel tall, mazel tall, the seven tall.
during this period of time. Thank you for all the other parts you've done. Thank you for what you are not yet doing. The sixth sense, how we all look forward. What we're going to do in just a moment is we're going to head downstairs to the social hall so we can continue smiling and celebrating. That's the best you got. No, 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 no. And so go downstairs to that. Parents, I offer you a bit of wisdom. The Talmud says, once they go to this brunch, they'll get schmutz on them. Take the pictures before they start eating. Mazal everybody.